what do you think about the increase in gut microbiome diversity in general and permanently losing so-called good bacterial strains following a carnivore diet? Well, you don't actually lose um, your what you what you lose is, is the quantity. That means the same species still exist there. They just re reduce in numbers. That's a different thing altogether. Now, some strains will reduce slightly more. Others will reduce slightly less. I'll give you an example. Bifidobacteria usually goes up. The two main big groups are Bifidobacteria and Fir um, Firmicutes. They're the two main groups. And then you've got all these other smaller subgroups like Lactobacillus and all the other stuff. The two big ones are those. Bifidobacteria goes down, goes up on a carnivore diet. Firmicutes goes down slightly. On a vegan diet, it's the complete opposite. Firmicutes goes up, and so do a lot of the inflammatory uh, markers. I've actually done a video on that. If you check the myths and falsehoods of veganism, there's a playlist. It actually covers this about the issue with the change in the gut microbiome when you put more plants in, a number of the inflammatory interleukins go up when you eat more meat and the bifidobacteria ones, which are more, especially the, a lot of the acid-loving bacteria, they go up in numbers. Actually, the opposite happens. So I think that's a bust, that whole myth about that you need fiber. It's the complete opposite. Again, like all these, it's just they got it all back to front because they're pushing a narrative because if this, this was an issue, you know, those Maasai and those Inuit would have really a lot of problems, wouldn't they? Mm. So, yeah, I, it's a lot of this gut microbiome nonsense is just nonsense. When we eat a species-appropriate diet, two things happen. Your gut is regulated better. Certain strains will increase, certain strains will decrease. They don't vanish, they just decrease in numbers. Anybody that says they vanish has no idea what they're talking about. And I would say they are completely incompetent if they're saying they die off completely. They don't. They die off, they die, they reduce in numbers. So you could say there's a bit of a die off, but they don't die off completely. So anybody claiming that they're dying off completely is wrong just because you need a one of species less it doesn't mean your gut microbiome is less healthy as i pointed out the big two main groups are bifidobacteria and firmicutes species appropriate diet bifidobacteria goes up and they tend to lower the inflammatory interleukins and increase those markers that are anti-inflammatory. And on a plant-based diet, it's the complete opposite. And you can actually see the research in the videos that I've done covering this exact point. Then taurine regulates the gut microbiome and also regulates how much it grows because too much growth in the gut microbiome, we end up with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth called SIBO. That's unhealthy when you've got too much bacterial growth. And on a plant-based diet, that's exactly what happens. And that's why you end up with low stomach acidity and all these other problems because of overgrowth of bacteria all the way through the small intestine into the stomach. That's creating a lot of problems. And the thing that actually cleanses all this stuff helps eliminate this. Taurine out of animal foods tends to re-regulate all this sort of stuff. It suppresses spermidine. That means the sort of stuff that actually it's good for, you know, spermidine should be down there where you need to grow, um, increase the sperm numbers. We don't need it in the gut. Um, we need it to be suppressed, the production of spermidine, in order to not increase the amount of um bacterial overgrowth so yes the amount of bacterial goes down but you don't need as much and still um paul mason has actually done a video showing quite clearly that the amount of small of 
short chain fatty acids go up and the only one that actually goes up more on a plant-based diet is acetone and acetone can be converted back to glucose through the liver so not a good idea so i would stick on i would stick to the the type of short chain fatty acid forms that come from meat so that's another one for meat um on that on that count and there's you just have to go and check my videos on the myths and faults of the veganism to get the other information so because i back up everything with research studies showing exactly and it's not epidemiological nonsense observational that's just garbage this but highly confounded and statistically let's say adjusted which means fabrication it's like taking a measurement of a pulsar a physicist and saying i don't like that it doesn't fit my model so i'm going to adjust those variables so it fits my model that's fabrication of reality that's what they do with a lot of this epidemiological they don't stick to the raw data they adjust it so they can actually show the complete opposite in some cases <laughs> it's like the Aventus study the people that were consuming the more meat were actually healthier but the the way they actually adjusted the data it actually became a 180 degrees um, in the other direction and i've got a video that grundy talks about the people back when they were doing those studies in the 50s and 60s they were eating 50 percent dairy and if you take a look the other animal foods you combine those they were nearly getting two-thirds animal foods that's the sort of vegetarian diet they were doing back then that was being recommended in low melinda i don't see them doing any studies nowadays i wonder why because they have gone they've shifted more to plant-based like the sad dieters and they're not having those advantages that those people back then with more animal-based um, vegetarianism had more advantages mm, i wonder why so say no more and and that was one thing that grundy actually he was a cardiologist there and he actually admitted it you know because he actually criticized the nutritionist there at Low Melinda that isn't that quite a lot of dairy which is very high in saturated fat and they said we've always done it this way this is how we do it Mr Grundy you know basically telling him it's none of your business this is how we've been doing it for quite a few decades uh, putting him on a very high saturated fat um, uh, you know animal based dairy diet with some other animal foods and some vegetables so yeah say no more in that regard doesn't surprise me it's consistent with other pastoral societies you know Ikaria pastoral um, Sardinia in the mountains pastoral goats and sheep goats on Ikaria only I think they have some sheep but primarily goats in the, uh, the Costa Rican Nagoya Peninsula it's pretty much arid you don't really grow plants there. A bit of fruit seasonal, but it's primarily, again, the cowboys. They herd, you know, animals around. So, mm. yeah, I mean, now along the tourist areas, yeah, there's more plant-based, but the actual people that lived there, the so-called longevity people that were cowboys, what were they eating? They were eating the meat that they actually... Um, uh, from those animals that they um, herded around. It's, as I said, once you look into the details about these so-called blue zones, you realise, God almighty, have they fabricated reality. Yes. So this is just more, the, the nonsense in the, on the gut micro. We understand more about the surface of the moon than we understand about the gut, gut microbiome and what every strain does and doesn't do and, and all that. We've got some idea. We know that some strains cause an increase in inflammation, some don't. But on a lot of things, yes, we've got very little knowledge. You know, I mean, very, very little knowledge in that regard. So keep that in mind because a lot of... i better finish it nearly it's past 7.30, God.
Ah, okay. Sculling milk. <laughs> God. Uh, this is what it gets to sometimes. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> So, yeah. So the th so the thing is, if people um, is, Richard's not there, he's gone. Anyway, so people should check out my gut uh, the the one that I that I call digestive issues. So I go right through and cover the stomach and cover the um, the gut and cover all these things, and you'll get a lot of good information on. Um, the sort of things that actually help and don't help because unfortunately there's just too much um, there's just too much misinformation out there unfortunately so yeah <clears throat> 